Hi, I'm Ben Painter with Flint & Walling. Here to talk to you guys today about our new variable speed controller. It's available in both a VS and TVS, up to three horse. We have a horse and a half drive, a two horse drive, and a three horse drive. What I'm going to do today is talk to you guys about the menu option. There's ten menu options. What each menu option is and what programming changes you can make. Before we get into the menu, I want to preface this by saying our, our drive comes out of the box pre-programmed, so you don't have to make any adjustments to the programming if you don't wish to. But the programming and the options do allow you a lot of flexibility. So with regards to the display screen, here we can see our pressure, our current, and our frequency. This is displayed in real time. We can also tell whether or not the pump is running or in standby mode. And our buttons here, we've got six buttons, up, down, edit, enter, escape, and the stop start. So any programming changes that we want to make to the drive, we can do right here from these buttons. So accessing the main menu. To get into the main menu, you simply hold the edit and enter buttons down simultaneously for just a few seconds. And there we go. We're into the menu. Option number one, control choice. Here's where we would switch between a transducer and a pressure sensor switch. So to make any adjustment here, we simply push the edit button and now we see set control. Use the up or down to toggle between switch and transducer. So if I leave it at transducer, hit enter to save that, now I get into my, my sub-menu options. There's three sub-menu options for the transducer. The first one is set pressure point. Here's where we can make our pressure adjustments. Using the up or down buttons, I can bring that down to 50 PSI and I hit enter to save that. Our second sub-menu is set our drawdown set at factory default at 5 PSI. If you don't wish to make a change here, just hit enter. And the range of the transducer. The, the transducer range is defaulted at 0 to 100. That's the same range of transducer we put into the package. You can change that up by, you know, up or down again. And if you want to save it, you hit enter. And that brings us back to our, our main menu, showing option number one. To scroll between menu options, you use the up or down button, so I can go now from option number one to option number two, hitting the up button. Option number two is our maximum motor current. So here's where you would go in to adjust the drive to a different horsepower of motor or a different motor manufacturer. So this drive comes pre-programmed. Again, we're showing 10.9 amps, so this, is a, this would be a three horsepower drive. We can adjust that down if we were wanting to take it to a, say, horse and a half drive, I'll hit the edit button here. You'll see set maximum motor current, and I can adjust this using the down button. I can take this all the way down to 8.8 .8 or 8.9 amps if I were wanting to run a two horsepower motor with this drive, or continue on down the line to 5.9 amps to set for a horse and a half. To save that setting again, I'll hit enter and I've just changed our maximum motor current from 10.9 amps down to 5.9 amps. And that is menu option number two. Scrolling up, option number three, this is our maximum frequency. This is the maximum frequency output to the, to the motor of the submersible pump, so we prepackage it at 80 hertz. If you want to make any changes here, again, same keystrokes, I'll hit the edit button. Now it's asking me to set my maximum frequency. From here I can dial it down to 70, down to 60, hit enter to make the save stick, and there's how we change our maximum frequency. Scrolling up to menu option number four, this is, uh, this is a pretty neat option that we've got, passcode enable. So again, same keystrokes, if I want to make a change to this, I'll hit the edit button. It's going to ask me to set passcode enable, I use on, uh, up and down to toggle between on or off. If you select on and hit enter, now we go into the second sub-menu of this, of this option, which is our set our passcode. From here, you can set any, pass, any five digit passcode you'd like using the up and down. So if I did one, now we just set the passcode there. If I hit the escape button, it's gonna bring me back to our home screen. Pushing the edit and enter buttons again to access the menu, what it'll do now is it's first going to prompt me for that same passcode we just entered. So one, all zeros, and now I'm back in. 
and that's menu option number four. Option number five is our underload protection. We can, again, same keystrokes. We're going to hit edit here, set underload protection, up or down to, to toggle between on, off, or prime. If we choose to have it on, we hit enter. Here's where we're going to get our deadhead trip point, 5 amps, our dry well trip point, 3.9 amps, and our dry well off time. This can be set in increments of 15 minutes if you've got a low yielding well, low recovering well. You can, you can adjust this from as little as 15 minutes all the way up to 240 minutes. Again, that's in 15 minute increments. What that's going to do is if the drive should trip out on dry well, it will wait 105 minutes before it tries to restart again. Enter will save that and that's our underload protection. A unique aspect of the underload protection is that it does differentiate between a dry well trip or a deadhead trip and it also self programs depending on the horsepower. So if I, I'm going to show you a brief example of that. So if we look here, we were at 5 amps for our deadhead, 3.9 for our dry well. I'll hit escape, brings me back to the menu option. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to one we talked about just a little bit ago, maximum motor current. I want to hit edit. I'm going to dial this up from 5.9 amps to 8.8. We'll hit enter. So essentially what I did, just to reiterate, we brought that from horse and a half to two horse based on our maximum motor current. So now I'll scroll back up to our option number five, hit edit, enter to get to our submenus. You'll see that our deadhead trip point has itself adjusted from 5 amps to 6.6 .6, and our dry well trip point has adjusted from 3.9 to 4.9. So self adjust based on the horsepower that uh, we have the drive set to run. And that is our menu option number 5. Option number 6 is our standby sensitivity. This is what uh, will allow the drive to go into standby instead of continually run in the case of a, a, a small leak or, or something of that nature. So this can be edited, but um, what I'll do is I'll hit edit here to access this. Our first sub-menu option is our standby frequency. Factory pre-programmed at 45 hertz. Essentially what this is saying is if the drive runs for approximately 15 seconds at or below 45 hertz, we're going to assume there's a small leak in the line somewhere, um, there's, there's something that's causing this drive to run, it doesn't necess there's no call for water, so what we'll do is we'll monitor this and slowly ramp the motor down so that the drive can enter into standby mode. Likewise, we have our, our standby uh, drawdown at uh, half a PSI. Our standby current is at 6.1 amps. And our set standby rate, we're going to ramp down 15 RPM a second. Again, this is just uh, looking at uh, monitoring our frequency, our pressure, and our current, and slowly ramping down to enter into standby mode in the case of, of a, a minor leak in the line. Standby sensitivity. Option number seven, broken pipe mode. This is our, this is our complete um, detection for a broken pipe in the system and it was what will cause the drive to trip out on broken pipe if, if the drive is running continually for our set amount of time. So broken pipe mode as you can see is set to on. It comes factory pre-programmed to be on. I can ch change that by pushing the edit button and using up and down to toggle between on or off. When you select leaving it on, here hit enter to save that and now we're into our second submenu or our first submenu for broken pipe which allows us to adjust our runtime. Again, it's factory pre-programmed to be on and defaulted at 24 hours. We can adjust that up to 48 and we can adjust it all the way down to 1. Enter saves and that's our broken pipe option. Option number 8, advanced features. In this menu option we've sort of tucked away some of the less commonly used things. Again, I'll hit edit here to access the menu. Uh, first thing we're going to see is our drive parameters. So we're going to see our current and our frequency in real time, but one additional element, we're going to see the temperature within the heat sink. Scrolling up and down through this menu option, the next uh, sub-menu we've got is our manual run mode. Uh, this is where we can tell the pump and drive to run manually. 
for a set period of time at a set speed. So I'll give you a, a quick example of what that is. Edit will change this. Here I can use up or down to toggle on or off. Enter. Here's where we would program our frequency and here's where we would program our time. This can all be adjusted up or down. And that's our manual run mode. We have external control mode. This would be used it's another set of contacts built inside the drive, can be used for a low level float switch in a cistern, a little water bug alarm, uh, any sort of external component to, uh, to tell the drive to, to trip uh, or fault out. And our drive status relay, this is the last option we have in our, in, in our advanced features. This would be used to uh, relay the status of a fault to either a light, a computer system, an alarm of some kind. It's just another contact in there that's either normally open or normally closed. And that uh, is our option number eight, advanced features. Option number nine, this is our reset to factory defaults. If we get in here and we're not sure some of the changes that we've made, uh, want to just wipe the slate clean to how the drive came out of the box. Very simple to do. Edit. We see from the screen here it's going to say press enter to restore defaults. So we'll press the enter button and it's going to save that set point to memory. So any changes that we've made throughout this, this time here are going to all go away. Alright, option 10. This is our last menu option here. This is our control settings. This, this menu option only exists when the drive is set to run a transducer. And here's why. Accessing it, edit, transducer calibration. Here's where we would uh, calibrate the drive with the pressure gauge. So if we've got a pressure gauge reading out at 55 pounds, but the drive screen's reading out at 50, here's where we would make that adjustment. Hit edit, enter pressure gauge reading at 50 psi, hit enter, and that will calibrate the drive. The other thing we have here, again, not real commonly used, is our PID constants. That is uh, where we're actually able to adjust those parameters when we're getting pressure dithering. If we're getting a fluctuation of five pounds, four pounds, uh, and it's a constant fluctuation, we can get in here and adjust these settings up or down, and as we adjust them, we'll see that the, the pressure will slowly dial back into our pressure point. Very uh, uh, rare that we have to use this option, but it's built in here nonetheless. And our last control settings option is our pipe fill mode. Uh, this is allowing us at startup to uh, fill our pipes for three minutes before the drive will trip out on a, a low PSI deadhead trip. And that's our control settings. The last thing I want to talk about with you is accessing our fault log. The fault log is not part of the main menu, but accessing it is very similar. The drive itself holds the last 20 trips that occurred and to access those trips what we do is hold down the up and down buttons simultaneously for a few seconds and we enter into the trip log this will store it in chronological order so we see trip number one is our dry well fault days hours and minutes since that fault alright guys that was our main menu options how to access the main menu how to access the fault log on our variable speed controller if you have any other questions feel free to contact your regional manager our tech support department at 1-800-345-9422 or our website at flintandwalling.com. Thanks.